On September 29th, the FDA finally released a draft guidance document for the eStar template. This is a major milestone because all the previous electronic submissions pilots that the FDA has done, they never came out with a guidance document for it. They had pilots, they had a web page explaining the pilots, they give, gave out templates in new and updated templates, but never a draft guidance document. Now's the first time that we actually have a draft guidance document for a new electronic submission tool, the eStar templates. But will this eStar template really help you? Is it gonna change, us, change the way we do things so we're submitting everything truly electronically or not? Is it gonna improve our review timelines? So that's why you should read the blog that we're posting today and visit our webinar that we have tomorrow, noon Eastern time, where we're gonna talk about this new eStar guidance document. But if you look at the blog, it has a couple of key things. Number one, I put a button in there so you can click on the hyperlink embedded in the button and you can see the guidance document right then and there. So you don't have to go to the FDA website and hunt it down. That's number one. Number two, I put a history in there of the e-submitter pilots that the FDA has done. This dates all the way back to 2012 when I wrote a guidance doc or wrote a blog topic about what was wrong with the pilots, what they had done in the past and what they should do. Nine years later, they're finally doing exactly what I said. Take the reviewers checklist and embed that right into the template. So as you fill in the template, you're actually answering all the questions that are on the reviewers checklist already. So that's exactly what they've done. And it's a little more work for you, but it's a lot less work for the FDA reviewer. It should streamline the timelines. It should increase the percentage of submissions to get reviewed and approved the first time or cleared the first time. And it should really make it easier for you to say, oh, I'm missing this piece of information. I need to make sure I get this before I submit the 510K. The next thing that we put in there is um, when the eStar pilot was launched, and some details about that. The e-submitter template uh, that was out there for a while and it was a pilot, everybody said, oh, this is gonna be the new thing at the FDA. I hated it. I absolutely hated it. It did some things better, but it took it, it really wasn't user-friendly for most people. And I got a lot of questions from people. How do I do this in the e-star or the e-submitter template? Um, I'm glad it went away. It's no longer even available now. So eStar is what they've settled on. This is going to be the new electronic submission format. CDRH is only going to be doing these eStar submissions. CBER has already gone to electronic submissions gateway. So that's the only way you can submit to CBER is electronic submissions. You don't put it in a FedEx envelope and send it to CBER anymore. You can only submit through an electronic submissions gateway. But for the short term, even if you use an eStar template, you're still going to have to load that on a USB flash drive or a CD. You're gonna to have to print out your cover letter, which is only two pages, not 1200 pages, slap it in your uh, FedEx envelope and send it off to the document control center at the FDA. The next thing we covered is our experience with our experiences with the new eStar template. Now, we've all looked at it. We've done an internal training on it. I've filled in pretty much all the information on multiple different submissions. I'm getting ready to submit a bunch of submissions using the eStar template. But one of our employees beat us out, Sharon, one of our new uh, 510K reviewers. She joined the company in 2020, uh, around August, and she's gotten the first uh, eStar template for our company in. And she's already gotten through the initial screening they call it a technical screening now instead of an RTA screening. Whether it's semantics or not, we don't know because they haven't provided a checklist or guidance on what's the content or substance of that technical screening. But the good news is we got through it first try without any trouble. And that's the same timeline. I discussed timelines in the review clock in the blog article as well. The next milestone for the FDA is the substantive review finishing at 60 days. There's a Madufma 3 and a Madufma 4 goal that was 60 days. That hasn't changed. Right at 60 days, the FDA gave us a, an interactive review uh, notification that that submission was placed on interactive review. That was a really big milestone because we have very few submissions that actually get on interactive review. Most of them get AI letters. Now, unfortunately, with an N of 1, 
I have no idea whether this means we're going to improve long term in our number of submissions that go to interactive review. But right now it's a single digit percentage for our regular submissions. So these E star submissions, we won't know until sometime in Q1 whether it really has made a substantial change in the number that go to interactive review. We need a few more of them before we're, we're sure. But N of one, we're at 100%. So that's good news. Um, I also put into this blog article um, what you should expect to be different for the format and content. There are a couple of key things that are more work for the person preparing this mission. Number one thing that's different for the preparing of this mission. Spam, go away. One thing that's different for the format and content is when you submit these uh, eStar templates, they ask you to summarize information that would normally be in our overview templates. So if your templates are well coordinated with the eStar template, you should just be able to copy and paste a, a paragraph and pop it right into the eStar template. If you haven't taken that time to make sure that those specific questions in the eStar template are answered in your overview templates that you've created for preparing a 510k or you don't have templates, then you're going to have a little bit of extra writing to do to help the reviewer out so they don't have to hunt for things. And that's not optional. If you leave that section blank, blank you won't have the e-star complete and you won't be able to submit it. Or if you did submit it, it wouldn't pass the technical screening. The other thing that they have in there is normally you have to provide labeling in your in, in other documents in your submission. And the reviewer has to hunt for that when they do their review, the substantive review. Now they're asking us, could you please tell us what attachment it's in and on what page of that attachment? So you have to actually list all these cross references to the pages and that's extra work. And that wouldn't normally be included in any of our overviews. So we're not quite sure how we're gonna streamline that for ourselves. Um, I got to think about that a little bit and see if there's a way we can automatically populate that um, and streamline that process. So I've got some people helping me on that. But if we can figure out how to make those cross references automatically populate, that would really take some work out of the process for populating the eStar templates. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Um, when you, when you can expect to see the electronic submissions take over and the paper submissions go away entirely. And they're still using the semantics of, is it an e-submission or is it an e-copy or is it this e-star template? They have them defined as three separate terms. But basically, when you're talking about an e-copy or today's e-star, it's on a flash drive. It's got a two-page cover letter printed out and signed and you put it in a FedEx envelope and you send it off to the FDA. In the future, they will have true electronic submissions just like CBER, and you'll be submitting it to an electronic submissions gateway. When will that happen? They are going to set a deadline for when that's going to happen um, no later than September 30th of 2022, and the transition period for compliance will be at least one year. So the guess is here that we're looking at the new final guidance will be released with a transition date for eStar beginning September 30th, 2022, and will extend until September 30th, 2023. So you'll have that time period to transition over to an electronic submissions gateway. Now, is that good for us or not? Um, well, the, the FedEx bill will get a lot less. Instead of hundreds of dollars every week going off to FedEx, we'll just be submitting electronically through an electronic submissions gateway. It will arrive there a day faster, which is good news. We can submit it anytime, day or night. We don't have to run off to FedEx and try to get there before they close. So those are all good things, but um, it's still a ways off in the future. So people that were hoping, oh, eStar will eliminate my paper submissions, eliminate my FedEx, not yet. 2022 to 2023 is your transition period of when that will happen. Um, the review timeline, as I said, really isn't changing. We've got the same uh, substantive review timeline. We've got the interactive review timeline hasn't changed. And they've just substituted technical review for, a, um, uh, an, for the old RTA review. So I don't know whether it's semantics or a substantial difference in the amount that they're looking at. 
But if you have any questions that I didn't cover in this short video, or you don't get your answer in the blog that I'm posting in the next few minutes, please register for our webinar on tomorrow. So it's tomorrow, Thursday, uh, the 21st at noon Eastern time, we're gonna be doing a webinar. If you can attend that time, at least put your question in there. I'll try to answer all the questions. I might even have time to put together a frequently asked questions document and post that for people. But the goal here is to give everybody the answers to the questions that they're wanting, as, answer some practical questions from people, what I think, what the future will bring, uh, advice on how to build your templates. And then we'll, we'll post that on um, for people that registered and can't attend, so you'll get a recording of it. But if you can attend live, we'd love to get your participation in that. I've asked all of the employees in my company and um, we also have a previous one we did that you can check out on our YouTube channel. So this will be the second one and we'll post that one up on YouTube as well. If you haven't looked at our YouTube channel, it's for medicaldeviceacademy.com. Um, it's on YouTube. So you look for YouTube forward slash Medical Device Academy. But we've got hundred over 100 uh, videos posted up there. Every Friday I do new videos. So hopefully that will help you. And don't forget, if you want to download this draft guidance uh, right below this video on our blog page, that's where you'll be able to find it. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. And don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful or go to our suggestion box and tell me how to fix it. Thank you. Bye-bye.